All right, I think we're live now. I don't, let me see. I got my Facebook pulled up over here. I'm in the show. <laughs> yeah, it says we're live for 12 seconds. All right. All right, well, good morning, Pete. How's everything going? All right, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You're holding up. I see you and Colleen are, you know, way ahead of the curve with broadcasting from home. Now everybody's doing it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> We've been broadcasting from uh, from the, the, the bedroom, the studio in our bedroom for uh, months now. And now you see in the Today Show broadcasting from their bedroom. Everybody's going to be broadcasting from their bedroom. So I'm so jealous. I figured I'd start broadcasting too. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just broadcast from uh, from the coffee shop? So, you know, uh, basically a lot, you know, what I wanted to talk about today, yesterday we were texting back and forth you know, about the relief fund and, you know, the type of money that's out there for small businesses. And, you know, you mentioned something this morning, you know, a big part of what we did when we started Florida Cannabis Coalition was to help people start businesses and launch and get, you know, going, especially, you know, companies that, um, you know, couldn't get in with the, the large licenses that were out there. So there's a lot of companies that have launched over the last four or five years and, they're suffering right now and or, or they're scared. And, um, you know, a lot of them don't know what to do. Um, so what I wanted to go over today was a couple of things that, you know, that not only they can do, but we can do as well, you know, during this time to uh, protect our businesses, you know, strengthen our position. And then this way, when the coronavirus is lifted, you know, we can all come out of this stronger as opposed to decimated. Right, right. Of, of course, and that's and that's what we're all looking to do. Like, just kind of get through this. Um, and there's there's a lot of assistance out there for people to get through this. It's just not always um, apparent and easy to come about. And and you know what? To be quite honest, it's changing. It's changed. So I, I I applied right away. So in the past, you know, just to give you a brief history, um, I've experienced where uh, the BP oil spill came through and decimated a lot of businesses here in Florida. And, um, you know, uh, blackjack dealers at the Hard Rock were suffering and they were applying for relief. And there were companies that their sales went down and, and that was very um, isolated, you know, to the Gulf Coast. So, you know, there weren't companies all across the country, or even all across the state that qualified for that. So a lot of people, you know, didn't apply through that process. I personally did. Um, we were able to receive funding and help back then. Um, also, you know, there has been funding and help when hurricanes have come through, but, you know, we're going through something that nobody's ever seen before. You know, I, I'm, I'm talking with, um, you know, like I mentioned yesterday, food suppliers that are supplying large, you know, chains like Cheesecake Factory, um, O'Brien's, you know, that their sales are down 90%. Wow. You know, they got thousands of employees that are out there on the road. You and they're giving away other, cheesecake with pickup orders too. Yeah, even with the pickup orders, I mean, it's still way down. Um, the dry cleaners is down, um, you know, and and us individual, you know, business owners that are out there. I mean, Florida Cannabis Coalition, everything that you and Colleen, besides the morning show, were events, the green carpet events going, you know, twice a month out there, you know, putting on one or two large events a month. We had things planned here in, uh, in at, at, you know, Chill Coffee that we we're going to be doing that we're going to be bringing together people like for events as well. And those are all at a total standstill. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I get a, I'm getting a lot of emails from the event platforms and uh, like Eventbrite and Ticket Leap and stuff, and I I can't imagine what they must be going through with all the refunds that they got to be going on and all these, you know, because they take a lot of money up front. Their cash flow has got to be in, insane right now. They're they're trying to reschedule events as opposed to you know refund money, and there's a lot of people moving to virtual platforms. Um, but the event side of things has been completely completely decimated and and we've even seen stories about you know like the people that do the av you know those people that you know they charge an arm and a leg to come in and do the av they're completely like out of business they're having record years and now all of a sudden you're done you know wow wow you know and, and even the farmer's market you and colleen were down in cape coral at one of the biggest farmer's markets in the country all those people that make their living going out and setting up tents every single weekend they're at a halt. They're at a standstill. And most of them are sole proprietors. You know, they're not companies with two or more employees. And we're going to talk a little bit about what they can do as well to get received aid and, um, and help them. Um, because a lot of people, 
you know, I've, I've, I'm talking to people that come into the coffee shop and many of them are saying, well, I'm not eligible, you know, and they're, and you see this look on their face of, you know, desperation. Um, but there is help for, you know, everybody at different levels. It's just kind of, you get, need to know where to look. Um, and the other thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be popping up that are going to be charging people to help them get this aid, you know, and, and you don't have to pay. And that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, you don't need to pay somebody a percentage of what they get you back. You know, th this is not a time to um, take advantage of the, the knowledge that some people don't have on how to access the funds because the funds are available for everybody. And there's people at the state level, at the banks that can help you and you don't have to pay them a percentage and you don't have to take that out. And, you know, that was one of the things that I really wanted to make sure that the people out there know. Right. Right. I, I agree. There's a lot of people that, um, you know, definitely look to take advantage of uh, different situations and look at them as, as different opportunities to um, capitalize on them. But you're right. There's, a, there's so much free assistance and this stuff is not, it's not rocket science to figure out. Um, it just takes a little bit of guidance and not being so intimidated. I know I'm intimidated by, you know, when I look at the forums and stuff, but once you look at it and, and, and really understand that it's not that, not that difficult. Yeah, and, and some of the questions, you know, are intimidating, like you just mentioned. So what I want to go over, I actually made some notes so my ADD doesn't kick in and we don't go off on some uh, conspiracy theory tangent. But, um, but yeah, so, so let's start with what's available here in Florida. So, you know, I, I don't know if anybody has been able to apply um, on the Florida, but I think I can share my screen. And I'm going to share my screen with the, um, see if this works. So I think I can, there we go. So can you guys see that right there? You can see all of that, cool. Okay, so the business recovery. So th this, it, it brings you to floridajobs.org slash rebuild Florida business recovery. Uh, it's a, that's a really long you know, URL, but basically if you go to floridadisasterloan.org, there, there's a, a little link on there, here it is and you go to apply online, and that's gonna bring you to this page. Okay, this is where you're going to be able to apply for um, for the Florida disaster. This is like a bridge loan that's available. And these loans, there's an express loan that's $25,000, um, which is supposed to come to you fairly quickly. Um, there is their regular bridge loan, which is $50,000. And then if you qualify, um, uh, for larger than that, they could go up to $100,000 on a case-by-case -case study or basis. Now, this is a zero interest loan for one year. It goes to 12% after the first year. Now, a lot of people, you know, even if they're feeling like they don't want to get that loan, I'm telling people apply for it. Um, you know, even if you feel you don't use it, you can pay that money back right away. But I believe with the shutdowns, this economic trickle is going to affect everybody and you most likely are going to need assistance. So if you can qualify for this, you want to go in and I'll, I'll, let's talk a little bit about what you need to do to qualify for this. So there are some eligibility um, requirements. So, so Tom, if you, uh, if you apply for it and you get it and you get the money and you pay it back right away, um, the only, you know, the only thing that'll do is help build your credit, right? Exactly. And, and again, this is supposed to be a bridge loan between when you get your federal assistance for your SBA loans. Cause, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later, the SBA loans, and these are, are, um, being supplied by the federal government as well. So state of Florida has put together, I, I believe it's, uh, 50 bill, $50 million or, you know, along those lines for these loans, which are express loans and, the state of Florida is going to be reimbursed by the federal government. Um, but again, these are basically to help you right now. April 1st is coming up real soon. And a lot of people are going to have rents due and mortgages due. Um, we saw yesterday Cheesecake Factory has is toying with the decision of shutting down all of their locations because they can't pay their rent in these large malls that they've been in, um, unfortunately. And, you know, a lot of companies may do this. They may shut down all of operations and only bring back 
what they feel mission critical or, or performing operations. So, you know, they, they're claiming that this is the time of adaption. Uh, that's the name for the, our time that we're living in, in the time of adaption. So that may happen. I know I'm going a little bit off course, but, um, but you know, I, I suggest that, you know, we, we get these loans because um, my point is, is if you use this money to pay your rent or to pay your mortgage, there's certain um, requirements with the SBA loan that's going to come where um, those payments are going to be forgiven. Right. So on the SBA loan side, um, when when it is approved or if it, if it is approved and you receive that loan money and you utilize that money to pay your employees, um, your rent, your mortgage, um, those are going to be considered part of grants. So you're going to have to keep notes for that. And we'll get into that soon as well. But at the state level, um, so it, yeah, it makes me do this every time, but it's all right. Hopefully I don't have anything crazy on my screen. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, well uh, um, is it pulling this up? FloridaDisasterLoan.org? Yep, 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 I see it. Okay, great. So as you can see, there's certain companies that do not qualify. Mas top hot tub facilities, escort services, massage <laughs> parlors. Um, the one that really got me was this businesses that have a primary purpose of facilitating polyamorous relationships. What? Like, what, where did that, what had to happen for that to be put in there? I have no idea. I didn't even know what a polyamorous relationship was. I had to Google it. You know, and, and I guess it's people that have multiple wives. If, if you guys have watched the, the, um, the, this, the Tiger King, I, I mean, Netflix, everybody's watching Tiger King. I guess. The, the, those guys on there, the one guy has two male husbands and the other guy in uh, South Carolina has three wives. So I guess those are polyamorous uh, relationships. <laughs> so those those businesses are not going to be eligible. Those uh, big cat, you know, uh, uh, zoos that they have out there. <laughs> I think they're going to see a real uptick at Big Cat Rescue once this is over. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, you know, so th those are kind of the, the company, the businesses that are not eligible. Um, you know, the, the loan. Um, so let's get to where you got to go in. Now, the, one of the issues right now is that the system has been bogged down. Um, I helped to process. Uh, I helped to process a application the other day and I was able to get in fairly easy. And I'm going to show you right now what's happening. So basically, you have to go in here into the DEOA. Is this showing up as well, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go in and you want to fill out your name, your username, your um, last name, your username. You make it your email, um, a password. Select the password, and then once you get through here to sign up, it's going to bring you to a page that's going to send you a verification code. Recently, this is where the, the, um, the issue has been. So once it goes to this verification code, then it's supposed to email you. You're supposed to get an email with this verification code. Unfortunately, <laughs> those emails have not been coming through. Um, so if you keep trying to resend the code, resend the code, then it blocks you out. So this has been the issue, and I don't know if it's because too many people have been applying. So that's been a, a block on applying. So I got an initial application in. I was at application number 7,901. The next day I logged in, I didn't see my application. I panicked. I thought it was lost. I emailed, I called the state. I couldn't find um, the application anywhere. Nobody would get back to me. So I filled out a whole nother application. Then hours later, I logged in and now I got two applications with the state. The second one was number 11,900. So there's over 4,000 people applying every day. I was able to log into the account that I have a verification code and see there are about 4,000 people getting in a day. So what I suggest is if you have issues here and you're not getting through, you may have to try different email addresses, maybe not a Gmail address, but use um, an email address with your business at the end. I found that the one that I got through with had our company name at the end, not a Gmail address. 
So I don't know if that's the fault or what it is, but you know, I'm trying to basically hack it myself to figure out why I got in with one email address and not with another. And I know um, Scott Laviano, uh, he's a local business owner here. He has, um, you know, a company called Eddie Bull. It's a uh, uh, ed edible uh, cookie dough. And he has a storefront, Yo-Yo Juice. And he was experiencing some problems the other day. And he posted by the time he got to his fourth email address, he got through. So um, I don't know, Scott, if maybe the email address is the thing. So I don't know if it's the, using a Gmail address. It hasn't worked with my AOL address, but it did work with my domain address. So I'm going to try again today, Pete, you know, for using the, the email with a domain address like Tom at FloridaCannabisCoalition.com as opposed to Tom C. Quigley at Gmail. Um, the other option is you can go in and you can download the form. Um, you could download the application as well. And I'm going to sh I'll show you what that looks like. So you could download the application, which um, this is what, what it looks like. It's your small business emergency loan application. Now, um, if you have a um, like Doc Hub or something like that, you can easily go in there and edit this. Uh, you, you know, put in what you're applying the loan for, $50,000, which is the uh, maximum amount. You put in your loan date and uh, you know what it is. It's economic injury, obviously. Um, you're looking for, and here it says right here, your expected source of repayment. Okay. So if you're going to be going to get the SBA disaster loan, that's how you plan on paying back this bridge loan. Right. Um, and then the documentation that they're going to need from you, um, you know, is, is the basic for, you know, applying for many loans that are out there. Again, they reiterate escort services, those polyamorous relationships. Now, um, some of the documents that you're going to uh, want to collect. Now, if you don't have all these documents, it's okay. Don't panic and say, oh, I don't have that. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to submit it. Submit it with what you have at this point. Okay. And then the auditors are going to go through. And I learned this when I was doing the um, EP oil spill and they'll tell you what they need or what they don't need. Actually, on the SBA site, which is also down now, unfortunately, there's a whole list of things that are required, but there's exemptions for COVID. So, like, they don't require you to submit your business plan. They do not require you to submit your next three years projections, which are normal requirements to obtain an SBA or short uh, small business loan. So, you're going to need, you know, your end of your financial statements and tax years for the last two years. If you have done your tax years, that's great. If you haven't, give them what you have. Um, your interim financial statements, you know, if you can pull those off your QuickBooks or you can go in and create um, a, a financial statement, there's a lot of documents online. Uh, you can get the SBA 2002 form, 2202, which is your schedule of liabilities. You can find these online. They're um, normally downloadable and they're free to be able to download and fill out. So one of the first things that you want to do is get yourself organized. You know, don't, you know, you may want to rush in there to get your number if you can get your number and get registered, but to collect your documents, you know, take your time and collect the documents that you need and collect what you have. Um, if you have any credit report um, concerns, like you have bad credit, so I've talked to a lot of people. They're like, oh, my credit's shot. You know, uh, my business has been rough. I've backed up my credit cards as it is. Um, and, and I have some credit concerns. That's okay as well. You know, what you're going to want to do is write up an explanation of those credit report concerns, any issues that you have. Maybe you have medical bills that have showed up on your credit report, which have impacted your score. What you want to do is you want to write a letter that explains those those deficiencies or those issues that may be on there. And you're going to submit that. Um, there's going to be a place to upload your documents. That's called other, and you'll be able to submit those explanations there. So again, if you have issues with your credit, if you have problems with, you know, potentially tax returns um, that haven't been filed, you know, use those explanations just because you've already been in trouble 
doesn't mean that this is something that's going to really drown you and put you underwater with no return. Okay. And, and that's another thing a lot of people are afraid of that they've, you know, have been experiencing trouble because running a small business is hard. You know, it, it's tough. And, you know, that you're a lot of people are skating by and they're paycheck to paycheck, they're invoice to invoice um, as it is. So, you know, don't worry. A lot of other companies are in the very same position as you. And, you know, you want to go in there and, and just explain those situations. In the application form, you want to going to want to collect your EIN number. Um, you know, basic information, you know, your key creditors, who, who, who has loaned you money, um, who your vendors are that you're working with. Now, this is one of the other things. If you have multiple owners, you just need to show um, the, the person that has 51% equity in the business, um, they're going to need them to sign on as well. And they're going to need to pr provide their, their social security number because they're going to co-sign for this loan, obviously. And that's a, or it could be a combination of two people that own 51%, right? Uh, it, like if two people, like if one person owns collectively, two you're people correct, own 3%, correct. you need two people. Exactly. So collectively. So, you know, it, it may be an individual or it says here collectively. So if you have 26% and your wife has 26% and combined you have 52%, you're there. Um, or vice versa, you know, um, whoever it is on there. But anybody that owns more than 51%, they're going to want their credit history because they're going to have to come on. And then they have spots for it, applicant one, applicant two, applicant three. Now, a lot of companies are owned by, um, that are in this, um, have have holding companies that own, own them. Um, when we were starting up with um, uh, helping people start companies, a lot of people start up an LLC, which is their holding company, which then owns that sub company. So that's where an entity may own it. So that entity may be, and they have a done, uh, done number, a Duns and Bradstreet number, also a credit report, but then you have to go in and show who owns that as well. Right. Then to go in here and then, you know, basically the, the rest of it's really self-explanatory. You know, I think what really holds people up is they're afraid of what they don't have. Um, and, and, you know, what I'm saying is don't be afraid of that. Get in there, fill it out to the best of your capabilities and, uh, and then roll with it from there. I, I, I think that because they've just injected all this money into the economy and they're trying to um, keep the economy from collapsing, I think a lot of these are going to get approved. Um, regardless if like all of the criteria are met or if some things are missing, I have a feeling that they're going to approve a lot of these. Just the backlog of, of applica applications and how quickly they need, they're going to need to get them out um, to, for them to be effective in you know, kind of saving the economy. Um, I think you have a really good shot at getting these loans. Um, and like you said, some of the stuff like the mortgage payments and stuff would be um, forgiven at the end of it. And I think the SBA is probably going to go the same way on the federal, um, well, they'll probably be less strict and less, um, um, more forgiving with this with the stuff that's that's on there. So um, we're definitely applying for it. I think um, it's a really good strategy for everyone to apply for it because, like like you said, um, you know, the worst that can happen is you pay it back right away. You don't use it, right? Like, what if you don't need it? You know, you don't use it and you pay it back. And if you um, do need it, you know, which is, is very likely that cash flow is going to be affected and you'd rather, you know, have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, so I, I <clears throat> it, it's really something that everybody with a business should do. Absolutely. And a lot of people's minds is telling them, oh, I'm not going to qualify. I'm not, I was there. So um, back in 2008, they ended something called federal excise tax where they gave refunds to telecom companies and people were getting, you know, applying for it. And it was, there was a trillion dollars in this fund. And I said, oh, I'm never going to get that money. So I didn't apply. The guy that was, and then my friends started getting 1 million, 2 million. I knew a guy that got 50 million. So I was like, whoa, everybody's getting it. So I went in and I applied. I applied at the end and I was eligible for $2.2 million. Unfortunately, I applied too late. And it wound up being too late and I missed out on about $2 million in funds that if I would have been a little bit more proactive 
And I would have got in there. And, and I think you even remember when it happened, Pete. It was right in the beginning of us launching because that was the money that we were going to use to really help these companies that were coming through in Ebor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I kick myself every day, but you know what? I'm using it as a learning experience. That's why as soon as I saw this and I messaged you right away, I was like, get in there. And I'm telling everybody, get in there and apply. Get your number. Get, get in the system. You want to get into the queue so to speak. Um, now, I don't know if that queue is locked down on certain things, and we're going to talk about that next. And I think that um, just like the cannabis industry, things are changing real quick. Hey, did I lose you, Pete? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> you there still? Did I lose you completely? No, you just for me? a second. Just for a second. So, My phone rang. <laughs> God damn it. So, so um, you know, getting. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah. All right, cool. So you can hear me. I just can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should leave and come back. Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll bring. I'll bring you right back. Yeah, I can't hear unless you have buddy over there. Oh wait, where's Yandy? I don't know. There you go. Has unmuted my mic. Can you hear me? Uh, it's just because I have to like restart because my phone rang. So I have to like leave the app and like close it and restart it because my phone rang. <laughs> Call back in. I think I brought you. All right, Pete's gonna call back in. Um, but what, what I was starting to say was you wanna get in the queue, you wanna get your number, and you want to, um, to, to begin the process. Um, because there's a lot of, just like in the cannabis industry, actually with what's going on, a lot of things are changing on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So that's with the uh, Florida disaster loan. So some of the things that you're going to want to collect is you're going to want to collect your, your tax returns. You're going to want to collect your EIN statements, your bank statements. I think we got Pete coming back. So there we go. There we go. He's back. <laughs> Sorry about can you that. Hear us now? What was that? Can you hear us? Oh, I can hear you again. All right. So great. So if you can get into the system, in Florida, get that done first. Um, if you can't get into the system, you can download that paper app and you can fill it out manually and you can upload that as well. So um, I, I believe I applied twice because I did it both ways. I actually applied before the online was available. I uploaded it and then, you know, I, I then applied, you know, through the digital process, which brings you through this entire process that, then it has supporting documents that you have to upload. And, you know, part of those supporting documents. So get yourself organized and um, collect all those supporting documents. Okay, now I want to shift. Do you have any more questions about Florida, Pete? About the Florida? Um, there actually is, um, I'm not sure where you're going next, but I know that there is some confusion between um, the SBA loans, the, um, the, the, the lo this, this temporary bridge loan from the state, and people filing for unemployment. Um, so I know that there's like confusion as to what exactly, how, who qualifies for what. So that, that was also something that-, that I was Okay, asking. so let's stay on that. Let's start with, because we're in Florida. So if, if you become unemployed because of this, or if you were going to start, so if you were going to start a position that you didn't start, that you were going to begin, you will be eligible for unemployment. Now, the state of Florida unemployment maxes out at $275 per week. And there's some strict guidelines on who can qualify and who can't qualify. And you can apply for um, Florida unemployment through um, its connect at myflorida.gov, I believe. Um, I have. So there, I believe it's the connect at myflorida.gov. And you, you can go through the whole process right there. Um, but that's norm. There's a lot of strict rules on that. You know, you have to put in your EIN number where you worked. But get that process started. Apply for that. Put, put your application into the state. Now, the federal assistance, what they've done, and I'm actually a little bit confused because I've heard two different things. So what they've done is um, they've increased what's called um, reemployment or unemployment insurance up to $600 per week. And I believe that's gonna be for up to four months. And that's gonna have a broader amount of applicants that will qualify. So right now, 
according to Florida unemployment, shift workers, Uber drivers, 1099 employees, um, people that work for themselves, they don't qualify for unemployment. But through the new stimulus package, they will qualify for unemployment insurance. So I don't know if that trickles down to uh, uh, require Florida to also require you to, but if you qualify under regular unemployment, from what I understand, you will get the Florida amount, which is 275, plus up to $600 from the federal. Now, some are saying that you'll get $600 regardless of what you were earning before. And I've heard from others that it depends on what you were earning before. So if you right. didn't earn $600 a week before and you only made $300 a week, you're not gonna get 600. You're gonna get up to what you were making. If you used to make $1,000 a week, your maximum is gonna be that 600, but you'll also get the 275 for the state. So there's a potential that you can get 875 a week and they're gonna extend those benefits for up to four months. So if if you have, if you, how do you apply for the federal one and not the Florida one? Because when you apply for the Florida one, it asks you for things like your pay stubs and stuff like that. And if there's a different eligibility when you don't have those things, like for you know 1099 markers or Uber drivers or stuff like that, how do you apply for the federal one? Or is it linked? They link together. So that that's what uh, that's where there's a little since everything's changing. So it's quick, this just went through last night, and I guess they agreed in principle. So. They still have to vote on it, and that was one of the things that you know everybody was confused about. Like, you know, and and you know, I don't agree with what you know the senators were saying, where they were saying, "Oh, it's too much money." It's not too much money. We're in a time of dire straits, and if you were earning that much, so my advice is apply for Florida right now. The federal um, insurance, I'm sure there's going to be links on where we can apply for. That as well. So I believe um, you're going to be. There's going to be another way to apply for the federal unemployment insurance. Okay. okay. And again, that's up to 600 per week, and that's going to apply, you know, to to people that are missing out on tips. There's also other federal grants out there for like bartenders and um, people that were working off of tips. And I'm going to find that resource, and I'll. I'll I'll share it on my Facebook page later on, but I had somebody that owns a local brewery that came in and they, they received $2,000 and I believe they said they got it already. Um, so there's up to $2,000 that's available. That's a separate grant through like the restaurant association that they're, that they're doing. So there's a lot of stuff out there. It's a matter of just trying to find it and pull it together. And as I pull this stuff together, I'll make it available on the Facebook page. I'll give it to you. Pete, so we can put it on the Florida Cannabis Coalition page and we could just start sharing it. But things are changing day in and day out. And, um, you know, I'll get back to what you can do as an individual. Now, the $1,200 stimulus check that you're supposed to get, basically, if you filed your 2018 taxes and you gave them a bank account number that they have on file, that check's going to be deposited directly into your account in the first week of April. Okay. Um, for people that they do not have their bank account, there's a form that um, is supposed to be filled out on the IRS's website. Um, and we'll get the link for that form as well. Now there's some people that have never filed um, for taxes. They're eligible too, okay? okay. If you're on social security, um, disability, you're eligible as well. So uh, there, there's been a lot of confusion, like my aunt is on disability and she didn't think she is eligible at all. And she is. Um, so those people, they have your information, they have your bank account, and supposedly they will all get that $1,200 per person, $2,400 per family, plus $500 per child up to, I believe it's $3,400. Now, is that only if you have filed your 2018 taxes? Because I know they extended the deadline, which is supposed to make it easier for people to file the taxes. So now... In order to get the stimulus money, you have to file the taxes. No, no, no. So it, it, it now that it just everybody that has a social security number. Okay, okay. everybody now, and you have to make less than seventy five thousand dollars per year, or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per married couple of adjusted gross income. That means after your losses, after everything else. Now, if you're one dollar over that, don't worry. You don't disqualify. <laughs> then it titrates out. 
Right, right, right. Yeah. Somebody there? Oh. So it, then it titrates out. So once in a while, we get a customer that walks in, by the way. <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> not, not too many, but they come in once in a while. So um, I got a lot of time on my hands over here. But I, I've been eating. I don't <laughs> you know. got a lot of food over there, too. Oh, my gosh. We got cake. And I, I know I'm going off a little bit. But cheesecake and Oreo cheesecake and ice cream and all the stuff you shouldn't be eating. I don't, I don't know if you saw me post last night, but that's it. No more. We got to get stronger right now. And, you know, we got to get away from those you know, for me, stress eating is a coping mechanism and for a lot of other people. But, you know, what we need to do right now is, is go in there. Uh, OK. All right. All right. My wife's telling me she needs to take the dogs to be groomed right now. So she's coming over telling me to know. Essential, essential business, dog grooming. Yeah. Yeah. So so a lot of people. <laughs> where was I? I'm sorry. <laughs> You're asking me where you were? Yeah. <laughs> so as long as you have a social security number. So now what they're going to do is it's actually based on your 2019 tax returns. So if you earned more than that, they're going to ask for that money back. But um, also it starts titrating down at $5 less per $100 you make over. So if you make $75,100 and the refund is $1,200, you'll get $1,195. And then that number goes up that way. So just because you made more than $75,000, you're not totally ineligible for the stimulus check as well. So if you haven't filed your taxes, you have to go to the IRS site and there's some sort of a separate form there? Yeah, there's a separate form and I'll, I'll get a copy of that form. Um, or if you've never filed taxes or you've earned too little to file taxes, you're still eligible to receive that. Gotcha. Okay. What if you owe taxes? Are they going to just like take it off what you owe? <laughs> no, no, what, what will happen is in 2019, you know, when you file your, your, it'll come, you'll owe it back. So if you all of a sudden in 2019, you made, you know, so you only made 75,000 in 2018. And then in 2019, for some reason, you made 250,000, you know, and they gave you that money. So that was another thing. Governor DeSantis came out with what you were saying earlier and said, we need to get this money fast to the people that are suffering. And if some people get it that, you know, don't need it or don't deserve it. And I hope that the people that don't need it really don't, don't will allow the other people to get it. But, you know, the way things are going, a lot of people are going to need this help. You know, those people that earn that much money, it's going to, they're going to, they're going to owe it back to the government. OK, right. so, you know, a lot of people are worried, oh, the rich are going to get money that they don't deserve. No, they're not. They may in the beginning because we're getting this money out faster to the general public. Um, however, um, however, you know, the, the people that don't need it, they're going to be assessed and they're going to have to pay it back. Now, on the flip side of that, when we go to the federal money. So, so that, that's the Florida bridge loan. Where are you? You can find a lot of these, um, the forms that they require online as well that you can utilize. So if you notice, the Florida, the SBA disaster loan assistance is down. Um, there's no login right now. And there's no, so if you go here and you go to apply online, what's going to happen is it's going to bring you to this where you were able to apply online before, but now what you need to do is you need to download the forms, fill out the information, and then submit it that way. Okay. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit after that. They also have sole proprietor loans. So this is where if you're not a small business, but you're a sole proprietor, like you're a company that sets up at the markets, um, you're going to be able to qualify for these SBA loans um, and you're going to get your FEMA registration number. You can get that number by calling. OK, now it's going to be hard to get through sometimes. But call, stay on hold, get your number if possible. If you can get that number, it puts you into the queue. Okay, the same thing with the SBA loans. Um, and then 
over here, it's going to tell you all the different forms to download and you can upload those forms. But uh, again, as things are changing, um, what I found out yesterday is that the SBA now wants you to go to your local bank. They want you to go to your local banker. So yesterday there was a bank match feature where you put your zip code in and it would tell you the community banks in your community, which you could go to that will help you process this SBA loan. So your bank knows your business more than anybody. So what I'm advising people to do right now is yes, go on there and see the forms and get all the documentation that they're gonna need, organize that, put that together and put a call into the local bank where you grant your branch, okay? They are obligated by law to help you process this SBA loan. Okay, if that makes sense. So yeah. they're gonna help you go through this entire process and there's no charge and there's no fee through your local bank to be able to do this for the SBA loan. Now, some of the great things that have been worked into this bill is that if you do take this loan, um, it is, you do need to repay it and that scares some people. But if you use these funds to pay your mortgage, to pay your rent, to pay your employees and keep them on staff, not, um, not uh, you know, uh, basically uh, released to unemployment, and you use those funds and you keep a detailed audited record of that, those funds will be forgiven as a grant. Okay? That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. a big deal. That's a really big deal. So now you can take this loan and this fund to sustain yourself during this time to make sure that you pay your rent, you pay your mortgage, and you're able to do all these things. And then you can use the um, additional funds, you know, to position yourself for growth when you're able to come out of this. So that's where I'm saying during this period of time, we have two things. We got to, we got to, we got to stop the bleeding, right? We got to, we got to, we got to assess where we're at and figure out what we need to do to keep going. So another point is you're going to want to call all of your lenders, call your lenders, let them know you're applying for the SBA loans. And I believe by law, they need to defer your payments. Now, when I say defer your payments, sometimes some banks are pushing them to the end of the loan. Some banks are going to be spreading them out over the course of a year, so you'll have a higher payment, like what happened during Hurricane Irma. But you should call your bank, you call your credit cards, call all of them and find out what they're doing. Even some car loans are deferring car loans right now. Um, actually, I, I know Colleen's son works at a car dealership, and some of the, the dealerships are giving some unbelievable deals. So if you're in a position where this hasn't affected you financially, you could go out and you basically have like four months, no payments, and then up to 84 months at 0% interest. So, you know, there, there's some good things out there. And, you know, the stock market, there's some good deals for people that are liquid right now as well. But, you know, I, we're not talking about that. We're talking about what you can do. So personally, on the personal level, call, get all of your, your mortgage payments, make sure they know, just don't assume that that's going to happen. You know, give them a call, tell them that, you know, you've been affected. The entire country has been affected. It's unlike, you know, in the past when it was very regional and, uh, and ask what they're doing already. Um, now some of them may have even changed. So if you already called, call back because now with, because they're going to be um, subsidized by the federal government as well. Right, right. So things are constantly changing. Like you have to keep paying attention to what's going on. And like, and this is great. Like I, I'm, I'm, this is really, really informative. And um, hopefully a lot of people are, are tuning in to see this because there is a lot of confusion out there and things do change constantly. Like you're saying with, you know, having to go to your bank now instead of filling out those forms, um, that's kind of a big deal. Um, and you know, the, the, the way that, you know, mortgages are going to be forgiven and stuff. A lot of people don't know that. 
Um, so a lot of this stuff is is evolving as we go along, and you know, we we the stimulus package is you know kind of, is constantly being debated and stuff. And um, I think that you know you just have to stay really on top of this stuff and stay vigilant about it. Um, and there is a lot of uh, help out there. I think there's a lot of and that help comes with some opportunity. So what we've been trying to do is look ahead as to what's going to happen after this, because, you know, I firmly believe that we're going to get through this. And um, after we get through this, where are we going to be? After we weather this storm, where are we going to be? How is the world going to be different? And how is your business going to adapt to that? Um, I'm sure that once quarantines are over, right? Good. How you guys doing? I'm just on a live feed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got, <laughs> I got, um, I got, so was, once people, once, I think, once we come out of this, Maria you know, Malak and some other locals that just came by. <laughs> just because um, quarantines are lifted and stuff like that doesn't mean people are going to be, you know, excited to get back outside and congregate with each other. So, um, you know, we have an event company, so we have to figure out um you know how people are going to adjust and you know go to different things so while you're you're you have all this time it's a really good time to not only focus on your financing in the immediate uh, but looking towards the future to how your business is probably going to change um and how you can use some of that short-term funding to kind of plan ahead and and your you know kind of fund your pivot you know absolutely and you know somebody sent me a quote this morning that was written in like 1888, and I don't know if that was during like uh, the Spanish flu. I didn't really, but basically, it said the people will, you know, confine themselves and um, you know learn more about themselves and enrich themselves, and then when they come back, they're going to come back stronger and they're going to. I'll find the exact quote, but basically, that's where we're living right now. We're in a time of adaption, and you know, uh, this is this time. You know, we got to put a Band-Aid on what's happening. we got to take care of our mental health. Realize we're all in this together. Um, no matter what your social class and what your economic class was before this, you know, large companies are suffering too, you know, and it's of no fault of their own. And those large companies employ a lot of our neighbors and friends and family as well. So, you know, you know places like Chick-fil-A, right down the road, I was talking to them, they're down 50% because – but even though their drive through is at full capacity, they lost out on all their catering jobs. They've lost out on all their in, in store dining. Um, you know, so it's affecting, it's affecting a lot of people. Applebee's. I have a friend that does uh, contracting work for Applebee's and you know, they, they laid him off a couple of weeks ago. So the, the help is out there. Um, what, what is most important is not to panic. Um, you know, don't indulge in, in, you know, these negative coping skills. You know, there's balance, you know, yeah, it's okay to eat some cheesecake. And I'm, I'm going to say it right now, you can't go completely. But, you know, I, I, I definitely caught myself yesterday and I was like, there's this little area where I squeeze in and out and it's getting tighter, right? <laughs> so I'm like, man, I'm going into my fat phase. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to go into that right now. So, you know, I, I, I set up my garage and I'm like, I'm going to do it every day. You've got a lot of time. So plan out your days. You know, emotional health, reading, studying, figuring out what you can do when you come out of this. Um, you know, us as a business, you know, it's forced us to set up. We set up Uber Eats. We set up um, we set up DoorDash. You know, we're uh, interacting with the community. You know, I'm, I want to start doing more of these talks, whether, you know, not every day like you guys. I, I commend you. A hundred and what, 203 episodes in a row right now. I, I don't I don't think I can do that. But maybe once a week, every Friday, we could come on and we could check in and, you know, we can help people just, you know, a, a weekly check in because we're losing that connection to our, our, our other humans. Um, you know, I was in Walgreens yesterday. And just picking up some vitamin C and some basics. And there was a woman there and it was like she almost ran away from me. Like the, the yeah. aisles aren't real wide, right? And I was walking and it's like she went so close to the And I forgot for a second. And I like looked down to see what I was wearing. And I was like, man, what did I? And she was a little bit older woman. And I'm like, what am I? What did I scare this woman? And, and then I realized, oh, social distancing. She's yeah, following, yeah. She's following the rules. But, you know. I saw I saw a meme yesterday that said uh, we 
<laughs> when someone sneezes, we went from bless you to F you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. And, you know, people are looking at it. And, and yes, this, this, is, this is serious. You know, we're seeing this. But, you know, these are things that we should have all been, you know, um, um, careful about. You know, in, in, in Hillsborough County, I don't know about where you're at, but we just went into uh, essential businesses only. So, yeah. you know, out liquor stores are essential businesses, you know, so but it's not a time to start drinking more. It, it, this is not a time, especially people that are homeschooling their kids and they got their kids home and, you know, they're going to start increasing their alcohol and take, don't use your stimulus money on your credit card bill for, you know, your, your drinking. Other people I've heard are running their credit card bills up. You know, they're like, oh, I'm not going to pay them. You know, that's also not the thing to do. Okay. So when you get the stimulus money, the other thing that, you know, not the stimulus money, but if you do qualify for the state money or the state lawn, make sure it goes to an account and you keep accurate records and you use that money to pay your mortgage, to pay your rent, to pay your utilities. And right. you have records of all of that. Because if you just flush the money all together, it's going to be very confusing when it comes audit time. Um, you know, your, your credit card uh, bills, call up and get those extended, you know, like we mentioned earlier. And don't go out and just spend $1,000 on toilet paper, you know, or, <laughs> or buy a bunch of masks, you know, if you're in it's your It's not going to appreciate. <laughs> yeah, you know. Actually, I, I didn't realize that this toilet – our, our place is right next to Publix. And, um, and you know, we, we just have toilet paper because, you know, uh, we have it. My, my wife's, um, you know, mother used to stock up on toilet paper before all the time. So, like, her garage just had it. So we never have run out of toilet paper. We've always had it. But I, I had, um, you know, a friend in yesterday, and he was, he was getting, um, you know, a growler, and he was doing this. And he's like, oh, man, he goes, do you know anything about plumbing? And I was like, what? And he said that they've been using paper towels at the house, and they're, Plumbing's all jacked up now. And I'm like, you don't have toilet paper? He goes, I can't get it. I go, holy cow, this is real. And I went to the back and I gave him a roll of toilet paper. And he's like, oh, no, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, I got eight packs and we Publix is right next door. Now, what I did find out is Publix is only giving you one pack at a time. They have a guard stand. The pallet of toilet paper comes in, right? And the guard is giving one thing of toilet paper to every family that's in there. But I heard some guy got arrested from stealing them from hotels. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, and, and, toilet paper. You know, and bottled water. You know, we have tap water. I mean, it's not great, but you don't need to load up on bottled. Yeah. This isn't hurricane. You know, where we have no electricity, no way to cook food, no way to do these things. I mean, I increase my frequency on HelloFresh. They're delivering my food to my house every single week i've gotten different meals so there's some things that you could do and if you don't use HelloFresh, i know i sent you a link there's like a thing where they give you the first box for free or something so and and, and it's not cheap but it's like eight bucks a meal but we get our, our meals so i got my meals cooking i mean you know we're not panicking over here right right that's not a bad idea actually especially something you can cook so it kills anything that might be in there <laughs> exactly you know now, Lisa is spraying down the box that comes with Lysol outside before she brings it in, just in case, because, you know, the Amazon deliveries, and they say it does, the virus does live on um, cardboard. So We're going to start say, doing the same. Yeah, and, and there's some, if you don't have Lysol, there are ways to make your, I think, alcohol. You can make your own disinfectants at home. There's lots of stuff on YouTube. Jeez, I learned everything on YouTube lately. But you can, you know, make some things on on YouTube and keep things clean. And if you do have things coming in, especially if you're in this um this uh you know high risk category, um, yeah. you know, I like I said, my dad drives Uber, and I had to message him the other night to tell him. You know, there's going to be money for you. You know, you don't have to drive right now, you know, because he's out driving and, you know, and my mom's sick. She's going through chemo. She was in Moffat the other day. And, you know, so there is a real concern. We do have concern, you know, and, and you know, my the boys are up in New York and there's, you know, they're in Queens. So, you know, this is a serious thing, but it's a time to reassess everything, you know, maybe streamline your life. Um, you know, look at those um, monthly bills that are coming in 
and uh, that you don't need anymore that they're automatically charging your credit card for. Um, you know, delete, you know, get those out. Don't just run up things. And um, But I, I think, you know, that we covered a lot this morning. I don't want to keep going on. Do you have any other thoughts or um, not other than, you know, I think that we're going to get through this and I, and well, I know that we're going to get through this and um, I just hope that everybody um, takes advantage of the assistance that's out there and doesn't panic. Um, panic is probably, you know, probably the worst thing that you can do. Um, I, I don't think um, there's going to be a shortage on toilet paper for very long. I think it's going to be funny when everybody's got all these stockpiles of toilet paper and nobody's shopping for toilet paper. Um, I've, I'm fascinated by people's, um, you know, psychology during this whole thing. Like you see a lot of people leaving Corona beer on the shelf, which is kind of funny to me. So I always like to look for the, the silver linings to things. And like you're saying, you know, a lot of people are going to spend a lot of introspective time, you know, talking about, um, you know, talking to um, their close relatives, to people they live with, to themselves, and, you know, do, doing a lot of reassessments and things like that. And um, I think that, you know, we have to look at the, at the positives, um, not so much as, hi, Lisa. There's Lisa. You're, you're live on Facebook. <laughs> and not so oh much at the negatives. <laughs> so, that's all. But I thought that this was really, really informative and um, we should do more of this stuff because I think, it could, you know, people can really benefit from knowing what's out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Pete. You know, I, I know it's it's confusing. I, I mean, as much as I have done this in the past, yesterday I was sitting pulling my hair out because, yeah. you know, I, I, was, I was going into the system and it was deleting me out. It was locking me out. And then, you know, then I went back in and I saw it and, you know, that's the thing. If you are going through this process, don't let it get to you. There is time. You know, I, I know I'm saying get in there and get your number, but, you know, there's two trillion that's being released, okay? We're, we've declared war on coronavirus, so to speak. So that releases funds just like if we were going overseas with tanks and, you know, and, and aircraft carriers and if we had to fund those things. So this money has been there for wartime um, things, you know, and this is a, one of those times. And, you know, so it's available out there. Um, try and get it. Don't panic. If you suffer from anxiety, um, I know a lot of people are, 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 you know, not right now, but come next week when April 1st comes around, even though they know that this is going on, there's a lot of people that this is going to stress them because they've never been late on a book. They've never, you know, and they have perfect credit ratings and they're so afraid that this is going to hurt them. Don't be afraid, you know, do, do some things, you know, get up off the couch, you know, breathing exercises, you know, do some stuff, you know, um, there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the workout company, like your brother is doing live streams for his students, you know, where they're able to go over some techniques. He's doing stretching exercises, you know, and these are great. I need but, some stretching. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. You know, but it started making me think, you know, and some of the gyms are, you know, offering free, like Peloton's giving free workouts. And right. you know, try and find those things that you could fill your day with. Um, get your mind off it. Don't, you know, don't go down that cycle. And, and again, stay away from those harmful, you know, coping mechanisms. You know, stay away from the alcohol binging. You know, alcohol is not bad. You know, have a glass of wine here and there. But, you know, I, I see all these moms that are homeschooling starting off with wine in the morning. I feel terrible for them, you know, wow. and, and, and the kids, you know, kids in my, what they've done in my neighborhood is there's the great bear hunt. I don't know if they did that down near you, but people are putting bears in their um, windows and then families are walking around or driving around the neighborhood and the kids are pointing out where the bears are. Really? Yeah. yeah so, and it's nice to see families out walking together. And so we got some bears. That, I was actually outside and I had a kid pointing at my house and he goes, bear. And my dog's name is bear. So I was like, huh, you know, I go, is bear out looking out the window? And I had to look because Lisa put, you know, a huge stuffed bear in the window upstairs. And, you know, I, I was so confused. I was like, I was like, why are these kids pointing at, again, you know, I'm going through. <laughs> I always, I think it's about me. You know, <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Pete. I'm going to end this now. Um, you know, I'm going to be here. You know, we are open. We're classified as an essential business here at Chill Coffee. Um, we're also doing delivery. We're doing growlers. 
of stuff. You know, we got Kratom tea. I got kombucha. I saw you talking about kombucha this morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, which is another great thing. So we're loaded up with those things and we're doing to go for people that want to come in and pick up. And then we also have a full line of our, our hemp products. I got hemp flour here. I got um, CBD and, uh, you know, we got, you know, tons of all Provita products. So, you know, a lot of people are, are, are coming in that are worried about anxiety and worried about sleep and they're looking for things to help them with those things just to get through it. So we do have it here. A lot of local places are going to be open. So wherever you live, you know, support your local, your local business that is staying open in this time because, you know, we're getting up every day and we're doing our routines just like everybody else. It's just not a lot of people are coming in. And when somebody does come in or does place an order, it's really uplifting to that small business owner. Um, you know, or if you can order from them on, um, you know, on Uber Eats, find out who your neighbors are. In my neighborhood, you know, there's everybody that owns local businesses, you know, whether it's Chick-fil-A, you know, most of the Chick-fil-A's, even though it's a big corporation, they're owned by one of your neighbors. Um, they're, they're locally owned, you know, and, and find out how you can support those people if you're able to, um, you know, and, and maybe get an order, you know, delivered to your house on they're, they're delivering full alcohol drinks out here. You can order a tequila shot, you know, so they've loosened up everything. I'm like, I, and I don't even think they're checking agents. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, you know. Oh, it's too funny. Yeah. All right, Pete. Well, keep going on. I'm watching you every morning. What are you doing? Thanks, man. Um, we're on Facebook now on Channel 7. Everybody please your butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I better get going because you know I, I I gotta talk to the customers. If she does, they run out. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Go serve that coffee. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got oh, we got really good coffee, nitro coffee and growlers too. So if you're local, if you're in the Valrico area and you want to come in. I got seating outside, you know, that's adequately spaced apart. You know, all events are canceled, obviously. And, uh, but once we can get started, we'll start planning what we can do. Cause I think people are going to really need social interaction on the road. I know I need it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> all right. Bye. Take care.